in the video game Portal, there is an achievement for finishing a level in the fewest number of steps. Or in other words, the lowest amount of distance, total distance traveled. And we're going to try and take a stab at figuring out how to calculate that total distance traveled. For example, along this windy path. So we're not traveling in a straight line anymore. We're going along a windy path like this one. The problem is you can't use the previous method that we determined. You can't just say the end point minus the start point uh, and then take the length that'll, that'll give you a vector like this. And then we take the length of that vector because you see it won't represent the distance along the entire path. It just represents the distance between the start point and the end point. We really took the roundabout way. We went way out of our way and so our path is much is much longer. Uh, so if we want to award the achievement properly then we have to calculate the you know the long path. Okay so here is going to be our approach. Uh, if you remember from the game loop video I did much earlier on the movement of the player gets broken up into discrete sections like this where every time a frame of the game happens the player moves a little bit more along their traje trajectory and this happens maybe 30 or 60 times per second so it gives the illusion of motion I can't talk and, and draw at the same time so really we're calculating these discrete straight time steps which are just lines just lines like this okay so the formula will look like look like this we're gonna call this guy x naught this is the position the player is in at the start and then he proceeds to x1 and then he proceeds to x2 and x3 and so on until so here, I don't know how many dots I just drew. We'll just pretend uh, 25. It's probably something around 25 dots. So if we want to add up, or anyway, we want to make an approximation for the distance that the player traveled, and it'll be a pretty good approximation, so that should be all we need, then we will say this is the vector distance from x1 from x0 to x1 like we discussed in a previous video and then we're going to add to that the vector distance from x2 to x1 from x1 to x2 and then add to that the vector distance from x2 to x3 and so on until we get to x25 and that has a name that has a name that is called a summation. We are summing up all of the individual smaller vector lengths to get the final result. And this will give us what we want. This will give us the total distance traveled. And there is a really nice mathy way to write this. Let's see if I can do it neatly. We're going to use the summation signal symbol, which is a capital Greek letter sigma and we are going to sum these x's. I'm going to use x1 for now minus x0 but that's not actually really correct is it because we don't want to sum x1 minus x0 all day long what we re really want is we want to get the first one plus the second one plus the third one so I'm going to use I'm going to use n okay I'm going to n is like a general case number. I'm going to say, well, when n is 0, then this guy right here should be n plus 1, and this guy right here should just be n. Okay? And then I'm going to make n 1. n plus 1 will be 2, so we'll get at x2, and then n is 1, so we'll get x2 minus x1. And then we'll make n 3, so we'll get, I'm sorry, we'll make n 2, and so on. So we'll get 2 plus 1 is 3, and then 2, so we get x3 minus x2, and we can keep going, keep going until we get to the end. 
And that n, I'm going to write it right here, n, it has a name. It is called the index. Index. And it's going to start at 0. You can see that we want, we want when n is 0, then we'll get 1 here and 0 here, which is what we want. But where does it end? The last line segment we want is this one right here. That goes from 24 to 25. And when n is 24, then we'll get x24 minus x25, which is what we want. So we want to stop at 24. you got to watch out for this because uh, you'll be tempted to put 25 here because 25 is the last one. But that will cause what's called an off by one error. We want to avoid errors. So we're going to end with 24 so that at the very end we have n24 plus 1, which is 25 minus x of the 24 and that's what we want and this will give us the total total oh my god distance that the player traveled while he was playing the game all right very good uh let's go to the code section and see how to implement a summation of this kind now, normally when you make a summation, uh, when you do it on paper, when you do it with math, you say some, you would say something like sum equals, let's see, x0 plus x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus, x, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, I just made up all these x variables, so they're showing up as errors, but just an ex as an example, uh, here we're going to use a loop to help us. This x1 is going to be the random value that I get out of this function right here. And we're just going to keep a running total. So here's our running total right here, distance. So it's really simple. We just say distance plus equals whatever the current value happens to be. And we're doing this 100 times, so it's like going all the way here to plus x. 99. Again, be careful of those uh, off by one errors. This is 100, but it says less than 100. So we never actually get to 100. We end at 99. So let's take out this line of code right here and see how that does. Gonna set a breakpoint there and hit F5. Takes a moment, but then at the end you can see the distance traveled was. In fact, let's Let's step through this function to see, see how it works. We generate a random value. In this case, we have 58. And then we add it to the distance. So now the distance is 58. It's a really simple way to do a summation. Another random value, 51.8.15. When we add it into the running total, we get 109.48. And then at the end, we should have a total distance about 5,500. Now the problem is you can't do this while the game is running because you don't have all this information up front. So you have to you have to do the same idea, but you have to do it inside the game loop. So let's kill this and go to the game loop. This is the code that we covered in some previous videos that um, that does handles the player movement. And at the very beginning of the code, right up here, I make a vector x naught that grabs the player's origin. And then after all of the game movement code is done, we grab another vector, x1, that represents the new player's origin. We grab the player's origin again after all of the movement stuff has, has been done. And then we have to add in the distance that we traveled this frame, which we're going to calculate by doing x1 minus x0 get the length of that. And that should do it. So this will give us this, we've merged it in with the game loop code and so it should give us the distance the player traveled each frame and it should add it to our running total just like we were doing before. So now if I take a lap around the field here I'm just kinda going around the outside of the field and end about in the spot where I started in here, okay, 
Let's go and put a breakpoint here and see what it looks like. Now the player distance traveled is not zero. It's about 230, which I would expect if I uh, walked around the field like that. That's about what I would expect. Anyway, it's not zero, which means that um, it's good solid value. So we can take this and give the player an achievement. So for example, we can say, you get an achievement for having walked 100 miles, or having walked 1,000 miles in a game. Not a very interesting achievement, but the same concept could be used for pretty much any other thing. Now, I realize summations are pretty not interesting, but hold tight. We're going to get into something really interesting next video when we start doing integrals. See you then.